it's Arthur from Lego Education again and uh, in this last video we are going to talk about animation and how I exported it to the real robot but um, just to recap first video we were talking about prototyping how to build and try different things in the second one we were showing uh, the different tricks about also the legs that there is no motors here but it follows um, so you can create some mechanism that will add um, uh, life to your model but uh, uh, they just following another uh, mechanism this th third one we talked about how to create your model in uh, in studio in this last one we are going to use another software uh, its name is blender I used to use other softwares but all the other ones they are uh, you need to buy a license and the cool thing about blender it's a quite um, uh, uh, quite interesting and really good software so uh, you can do a lot of things with that it's most of the people that use use for uh, special special effects or uh, uh, 3d animation or 3d uh, visualization so you can do a lot with that what we are doing we are creating a rig what is a rig you have the character and you need to create controllers on this so you can animate so we just have the studio just give us the mesh like the, uh, the objects in a 3d environment now with my uh, with blender we are connecting all the different elements and saying okay when you are moving this this part is connected to a motor uh, we are going to uh, we um, we have controllers to help you so you don't need to move every part just having one controller let me show you how it works so here I have like the model and uh, right now it's already set up so we have everything here um, and uh, let's see if I need to yeah so here we have our model so we have Alice the 3d version of it and um, you, if you pay attention you're going to see that we have different elements that we don't have in the real one so the first one like this green element big one is one bone so and we have several bones they are inside so we have another one here so as the real bones they are the structure that you have uh, to control your robot so they will create relation between things um, remember that I built this leg in a straight angle I will show why because when I was building it let me just grab the bone up here so I, I didn't place the bones like that it was in something like this but as you can see all the elements are following the, uh, the bone so when I move the leg it will move in the right way but what happens here I have this bone attach it to the rib so when I rotate it will follow it and we are doing this for all the elements so if I go up here we have like the top I'm not just moving the parts I'm moving also and creating relations with them I think it's going to be easier for you to see here so here I have the shoulder mechanism the shoulder mechanism works like this I have this rack here and I have a lever so when I'm moving it it should so like I have the motor here I have a gear so I need to go inverse kinematics so if I'm moving here what is going to be the position of the gear so it's the inverse that I'm doing the inverse kinematics is the same thing that happens with the uh, with the uh, the leg I, I, I don't know the position of the knee um, the rotation of the knee but it was able to calculate for me uh, remember that I present also the ears movement here it is now so going up and down going up and down here so and that's what I want I want to animate the controllers and uh, it will give the position of the motors let me show another one that is quite complex so here I have 
the two motors and both of them they have like a, a bowling here as you can see I'm moving the neck I'm not moving the motors but the motors will react to the position so both of them need to work together to move the head up and down if I want to have like the turn the, the dog turn I need to use this controller so that's what happens so one motor needs to go up and the other one needs to go down okay when I'm moving like um, the shoulder the shoulder I have like gears here and I also need to calculate them so I'm moving it so I need to calculate the ratio between the, the gears so everything it's around the relation between elements here the cool thing about this kind of softwares is that we have a lot of animation tools um, let me just move to the timeline and um, so you can see the keyframes here and I already have an animation here so let me just move like this and I made this animation to like if Alice is uh, late for something so she will look at the watch so moving having a look moving one side uh, looking to one side realizing that it's quite late putting the hands on the head that's a simple animation so and I can use <clears throat> all these tools to, to create the animation I could also create loops um, and other stuff let me open another animation that I have here so I'll not save this one uh, dance let's see if dance 3 is the correct one I'm not sure oh it's downloading here but uh, so what happens is that I can create several animations all these animations um, I will export how um, remember I have um, um, the data from each motor I'm going to create one txt file a text file with all the coordinates for each motor it's a long list um, and uh, with that list I send to the hubs and they are able to catch each one I will start turning it on so we it's a lot of hubs to turn it on it's also a lot of hubs when you need to charge yeah so and to control Alice I have a controller so two hubs and um, I have a list of animations that I already have here so let's see if this one is looking for great now this one goes here yeah yeah everything is fine so let's come back here it's open now so here I have one animation so oh yeah it was another dancing that I was doing so like let's play here so so as you can see I'm trying to connect motors the movement of the uh, the legs the movement of the arms trying to create like a wave thing okay um, but uh, let's see how it works the first thing that we need to do when we are um, um, operating Alice we need to wake up her she's in a, um, a sleeping position now and uh, I will wake up her so so now she's in the rest position and now I can move to the other ones so Alice is able to look around Hi, Alice. Um, and uh, because Alice is doing a lot of stuff these days, she needs to stretch a little bit. So let's stretch. Yeah, doing some exercise. Yeah, 
have. Another cool thing is that you can interact with her because I did that animation. So I will just place Alice like this and um, let's do a high five. Hi Alice, how are you? Great. But um, I can say for you that the most awesome thing that Alice is able to do is to dance. Alice, can you give a good dance for us? Oh, right. Let me show you how these files look like here. So let me just open one of the files. Here is one of them. As you can see, it's a long list. Each line, I have the position of each motor. So one fit, the other one. Like this one is uh, the shows up and down. Uh, these ones are related to the rotation of the body. So each one unto the last one. This one is just information about in which frame I have. This file here, it's related to the stretching. So it has 420 frames and uh, each hub will read that file and go back here. That's how it looked like. So um, let me see if I have another one. I think I have another animation here. So it's waving, right? All right, Alice. So say hi to everybody. Cool. Well, Alice is still in working progress. Uh, it looks quite good now and I'm happy and that's why I'm presenting to you. But uh, I'm, I have several plans for the future of Alice. One of them is maybe changing the display to an eye so I can have like an extra uh, movement. So when we are looking around, sometimes our eyes goes first. So my eyes will go first and the whole body will follow it. So that's another thing. I already have one um, uh, program for, for that, but I, I didn't implement for the full file. Another thing is um, now with the Raspberry Pi integration, maybe we can use a camera. So uh, having Alice, instead of just using the, the ultrasonic sensors, I could use the camera. So interacting with people who recognizing faces and um, like uh, playing animation depending on the uh, what is happening in front of her. So falling a ball, I think it would be quite interesting and uh, easy uh, to make. But uh, it's a work in progress, so probably I'm going to add new stuff in the future. Um, and I hope it um, helps you to understand a little bit the process um, and also a little bit how it works. It's, a, it's complex to explain every step, but um, uh, if I need to divide it, it's, it's like that, building Alice, um, trying and prototyping it, creating the, uh, the simple uh, 3D file in Studio. The next one is when you're going to Maya or Blender or some kind of 3D softwares um, and after exporting all this data. Um, and uh, the cool thing is that um, the program that I have in the hubs here, they are really, really simple comparing to what maybe you're thinking. Remember that we use the file copying a position of one motor to another one. It's funny, but that's the kind, I'm not using Scratch, in that one I'm using Python, but it's almost the same thing, but I am multiplying it for every motor. So instead of having a motor sending, go to that position, I have a file and the, the Python file just need to look that position and follow that. It do really, it makes it really fast, this cycle, and uh, the result is what you saw. So thank you very much. I hope we have all the opportunities to explain more or doing other uh, projects in the future. So see you around. Bye.